Well, hey, my name is Ryan Earnhardt at creativesoundlab.tv, where audio recording is an art form. Uh, well, today is a case study, a really cool technique developed by the Weathervane Music Project. Uh, the engineer is there, uh, led by Brian McTeer. Brian McTeer has been uh, featured in Tape Out Magazine, and uh, I've been talking to him for a couple of years. I've been really excited about what he's been doing uh, with the shaking through videos, and they've just been a huge inspiration for me. But his technique, it's a three mic overhead setup for the drums. It's really cool, it's a really uh, great way to get the entire kit. I'm really surprised how well it actually worked. And I have the audio to back it up. It's a little complicated the very first time that you set it up. Uh, so there is a guide available from the Weathervane folks. I have a lot of listening for us to do today. Let's check it out. So in order to pull this off, what you'll need is some string, some tape, a ribbon mic and two small diaphragm condenser mics. This technique divides the kit from the side. It goes over the bass drum, looking straight to the snare. Then from here, you place a ribbon mic about three to four feet over your ride cymbal and point it at the snare. This is the center of your drum sound. The next step is to take a short piece of string that can measure the distance between that ribbon and the two toms. And what we're looking for is the distance of that ribbon to be the same between those two toms, just to make sure that the toms are equally balanced in that ribbon mic. The mic that I'm using today is the Rode NTR, and it's really the foundation of the drum sound. And the other two mics that we're gonna add will create the side image and the detail around the sides. For this next step, you'll need a longer piece of string. You wanna tape it to where the bass drum makes contact with the beater, stretch it up to that first ribbon microphone, and then stretch it taut back down to the snare drum. This will create a fulcrum on this string, and this string will be used to find the height of both the side microphones. The first one we're gonna place is the one over the snare drum. So this is the classic position of a uh, mono overhead. And so what we do is we just take our finger and just roll it right on the string. We don't have to pinch the string. And we can place that first side microphone over the snare drum using the string to gauge our height. The mics I'm using today are the Rode NT55 and Cardioid. Keep this piece of string taped to the kick drum and the snare drum, but you can put it down for now. Grab another piece of string and measure the difference between that ribbon and the mic you just set up. This distance will also be the same distance of that center ribbon to the third microphone located over the floor tom. We want to make an equilateral triangle. Anywhere you measure, the mic should be the same distance from one to the other, making a perfect triangle. Once we have the equilateral triangle, adjust the height of this microphone using the original string taped to the snare drum and bass drum. This means that that side microphone on the left will be dipped below the other two microphones. This is gonna be different from a recorderman approach. With the recorderman, you pinch the string and you only place the second microphone over the floor tom on that axis. It creates an arc and you have to pick a spot on that arc that's created with the string. In this technique, you can actually let the string slide on your finger. This is creating a whole concave area that we could be placing microphones as long as they're equidistant from each other to create that perfect triangle. Okay, so I know this seems crazy, but it really actually does work. Let's hear it in action. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is flip the phase of one of those side microphones, the NT55s, the small diaphragm condensers. This will be in mono, so we can actually hear the signals fighting or working together. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's just crazy how much of that snare disappears. It just really proves how well this technique is working for us. Now let's try flipping the polarity of the ribbon mic. The snare is just gone. 
Once again, in mono, we can really hear the signals adding or fighting together. And in this case, it's really fighting one another for that phase relationship of that snare. This technique is really about the overheads, so I'm not using any close mics, but I am setting up a second NTR ribbon mic in front of the kick drum. I think that with just these microphones, it actually sounds really great. And to add a close mic to this is only gonna reinforce an amazing foundation of sound that we already have. I've actually measured the distance of that NTR on kick to the distance of the NTR as the overhead and made sure that they are equal distant from that snare. So let's have a listen to that. Once again, we can see that the snare drum is just being reinforced, even though just a little, by that front kick mic. And back to stereo. Now I'll take it back to the beginning and start soloing mics. Here's the pair of small diaphragms, the Rode NT55. And here's the NTR solo, the center ribbon microphone. And here is that kick mic out front. For fun, I want to go ahead and turn on a pair of room mics as well. These are Rode NTR ribbon mics. And this is also a weather van technique. I don't have the time in this episode to go into it. There's a PDF available from them if you're interested in learning this one as well. The preamps that I'm using today for these three overheads and the kick mic is the Warm Audio TB12 and the Warm Audio WA12. Now, the TB12s are essentially run in the same settings um, that the WA12s give us. So it's the X731 op amp, it's the vintage cabs, it's the steel transformer, and I'm using the pad, uh, of course the phantom power. Uh, now, one cool thing about this uh, is that when you're using mics with phantom power, it's great if you have a built-in pad, that way, the full 48 volts is getting to the microphone. Uh, I've used uh, an inline pad, um, just building my own pad and the XLR cable. You're actually cutting the voltage as well. It's, it's really not something that I thought about for a while, but it's most likely affecting the performance of the mic. One thing that I found really interesting about the preamps is the way that it affects the transients. It has kind of a really gooey, it's really fast, but it does have kind of a gooey transient to it. It's really thick. These sounds are completely dry. There's no compression, there's no EQ. Okay, so I don't know about you, and you may think that I'm crazy, but um, that technique is crazy cool. Uh, when I was setting it up, I really had my doubts. Um, I was just, I was almost kind of laughing at it. You know, it's like, I can't believe I'm doing so much just to set up a couple mics. But when I got in to the control room, I pulled up the faders, I was I was really pleased with how it sounded. It, it actually sounded a lot like those shaking through videos that I like so much. So um, it's a really cool, it's a really cool um, combination of kind of the vintage kind of deal with that mono ribbon with the kick and snare and then kind of the stereo wideness out to the sides. 
Um, and I know that uh, Brian told me that he kind of pans about 40% or so, between 40 and 60 is kind of the max. So, um, so yeah, it's a really cool technique. Um, the guide is uh, found at the link below, so you can get it straight from the source uh, from the weather vane folks. Also, uh, next week, no episode, I'll be uh, hanging out with you guys at the Mixed Challenge, so follow the link for that if you want to join in. I'll see ya. Yeah.